Welcome to another episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Up Sessions podcast, starting with a little crack and a pop and a sizzle and a cough from Sergi. Yes. <laughs> uh, I have some LaCroix, some bubbly water. You should, there's something there's something tasty about having like a bubbly water of some sort next to a coffee. I think they just go hand in hand. Probably not the best. I, ideally, I'd have some Topo Chico on the table, but LaCroix is also like half the price i think no, um, this is nice you know what i would make with this what so you got a lime Lacroix mm-hmm. for those folks who aren't watching uh about 15 grams of simple syrup and a shot of espresso what is that a tonic no espresso tonic, tonic? no uh, kind of but espresso tonic will use tonic water of course but this is like flavored uh, sparkling water mm-hmm. with uh, some sweetness in that just be a little drink yeah maybe use some bright espresso good acidity maybe maybe i don't know worth a try anyone who's listening it is that would sounds like a summer drink so maybe uh stash it away in your portfolio wow powerful we're drop we're dropping drink recipes on this podcast let's go all right let's pour some batchy yep um yeah uh friends i will say um i'm so stoked for the new copies that are coming uh part partially the reason why i'm saying that's because as i was roasting today um right before the podcast actually i was roasting and it's like bittersweet when you get to the end of of the inventory of a good coffee Mm -hmm. you get to the end and you're like man that was like a good run like i'm glad people got to enjoy i'm glad it was sold but then it's like, oh, I kind of wish I had it around for, I don't yeah. know, you know. So, I don't know. That, but that thing. being said, we have a lot of really tasty coffees in the pipeline. Like, really tasty coffees. Yeah. Um, some really good stuff coming. Just, I, uh, this will just be a delight. I'm going to enjoy all of these coffees that uh, that are coming soon. So, but anyways, drinking some Batchy. Hmm. Very interesting coffee. Serge, what do you think about it? A very nice mouthfeel. I I threw it in. I didn't tell Serge what it is. Yeah. What is it? No idea. Very what, nice mouthfeel. It's yeah. like nice and thick and um, like syrupy. Very good mouthfeel for sure. Mm-hmm. When I was swirling it around before I took a sip, like there was like like a berry flavor, mm-hmm. berry. I, I mean, uh, like a berry scent to it, for sure. Not really like, f- like fresh berries versus I guess berries or fruit, like fresh fruit, but more like berry kind. Hmm. Nice citrus. Sounds about right. Um, like a tiny bit of florals, but not like nothing, anything profound. Yeah. There. And then there's this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, like almost like a caramely. There's no chocolatey sweetness. I don't think in this coffee. Uh uh-uh, no. Unless it's like super mild. There's a rich bodied sweetness. That's where mm-hmm. the mouthfeel, the tactile experience was very nice. The aftertaste lingers like almost like a, uh, like a caramel. Mm-hmm. Very nice aftertaste. Yeah. <laughs> a good lingering aftertaste. I like. I like this a lot. Yeah. It's it's very nice. It's I think the complexity on this is very pleasant, especially considering this is a batch. This is a solid brew of it. Yeah. I'm glad we're nailing our batch brews for some reason. Finally. It's um, a new era. And just say a new era. Yeah. <laughs> this is powerful. <laughs> as prophetic as it gets. <laughs> new <laughs> A new era like the hats. New era. Wow. Not this one. Um, this is like mm. a daily driver coffee because the berry flavor is not like stupid big. It's there. Oh, it's the sweetness mild. is so sweetness pleasant is on so this. Nice. Like, let's go. The sweetness is so tasty on it. Wow, it's the complexity is. I want to say it's it's in, insane, but it's no. just enough complexity where it's like both you can enjoy this as a daily driver but this will keep blowing your mind as a daily driver 
Like this just brings so much interest in the flavor experience. We said citrus, like I think orange or like mandarin orange, yeah. is like right in there. Mm -hmm. mm. It uh, just doesn't have the clarity I want. And I guess I'm comparing it to like a pour over or a mm -hmm. cupping. It doesn't have that clarity. In a, it's a batch brew. Yeah. So, you know. Really excellent. Wow. And that lime uh, LaCroix is just nice little, uh, little, little touch on the palate. Um, this is remarkable. This is, um, I was at the roastery. We had some leftover, a little bit of a Burundi that we roasted like three weeks ago. And I was like, dude, I'm just going to pack it in, send it in for the podcast. So this is, is this like the Burundi. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's not what I expected. Really? Why? I would have thought this is South American coffee. For very good reasons. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, it doesn't taste, taste like a African coffee. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, it also doesn't taste like a natural. It doesn't, no. But I think the and, berry on the nose uh, is what got me. Like, that's the berries. Yeah. This, I mean, this is the, the jamminess <laughs> that we put on the label. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, there's so much there's so much to like i think for myself in this coffee that i just it, it's it's fun it's kicks and giggles yeah yeah i think the comp the weird thing is the combination of the coffee with the lacroix the lime is LaCroix, killer it is killer but i'm getting like a grapefruit aftertaste hmm. um maybe just got into my head we were just talking about grapefruit not you and i but before i got here so it's a very pleasant combo yeah it's nice Speaking of which, um, I was roasting. Uh, well, what inspired this episode is because it's something that you and I have talked about so, so much. Like this is not a, this is not a foreign conversation to us. Mm -hmm. um, this is literally a roaster warm up uh, conversation yeah. <laughs> for us. And um, mm -hmm. whoa! All right, let me let me send that into a uh, focus mode. Um, anyways. So, yeah. So what, what inspired this conversation was more that um, today or last night, late last night, I saw a post from um, somebody in the coffee industry that he was a Q grader who posted about a Guatemalan coffee that um, actually I think Scott Rayo gifted to him. Mm. And uh, he tried the Guatemalan coffee and he, he graded it at like an 87 and just raved about it in the caption of how, how, how pleasant it was, how enjoyable it was, how much people that were cupping coffees, like anaerobic coffees, coffees that were more expensive than this. Mm -hmm. He said um, that it, it just blew the table away. He said it wasn't quite as good as the, I guess he was cupping alongside the Esmeralda uh wow. the panama he's like he's like obviously it's <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah. yeah but uh but what what intrigued me is that he scored it at like an 87 and i the pat well, well, gosh why well, I, I can't speak what i'm getting at was the coffee the guaraman coffee is actually a coffee that we've been roasting for the last four or five months yeah and not many people actually even know that because we never ended up releasing it. Yeah. And we ended up keeping it for some bigger wholesale accounts that consume a lot of Guatemalan coffees from us. Mm -hmm. And um, we did the collab with Lifestyle Lab Matt um, with that coffee. So a couple of people got to enjoy it. If you buy a box, you we also threw it in the box, but it was never a standalone product that we yeah. sold and that we made like an official yeah. release. And this is what got me. I was like, and you told me this. You're like, we should release this coffee. And I was like, I don't know. It's not It's not that great. And it's something that we could just sell mm. to our wholesale accounts. Not that we sell bad coffee to our wholesale yeah. accounts, but more like, I was just like, this is just something that um, is going to be good for just like a solid espresso coffee. It's solid. It's not, it's not bad. I don't yeah. even know how to put it into words, but it's not like an A player. Yeah. And so, and it was supposed to be actually a very temporary coffee to yeah. fill our menu by the time we got fresh crop guats. Yeah. So with that very long context, yeah. what I was, what I'm trying to say is that there was a coffee that we had that's actually really good that mm -hmm. some, like a Q grader praised it. And I thought that, eh, 
no, we're not going to release it. Yeah. And to me, that's both a bummer and like also a good thing kind of, but it's more of a bummer. And as soon as I read that post, I my my perception of this coffee changed completely. And I'm like, man, we should have released it. Yeah. Just because somebody said something. I mean, that's classic Instagram influence, eh? <laughs> I mean, th- I, I became victim. Yes. Yeah. It's good. Like you said, it's good. And it's also uh, bad in a challenging way where uh, there's this partial regret of like what could have happened if we would have released it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's also, I think, it's good to be challenged in that way, to be like, oh, I wish we would have shared this coffee with more people to actually yeah. get more opinions on it. And that yes. was a coffee that we were kind of hesitant, not yeah. afraid to share with people, we were just hesitant. Because we, I think it all goes back to when we were purchasing the green coffee, we were actually looking to fill a void. Mm-hmm. And we were in quote unquote yeah. desperate times. Yeah. So we were making decisions out of those circumstances. So our vision for this coffee wasn't to be like, okay, this is our next, uh, like you were saying, like not a, or like this is our next varsity star player yeah. coffee. Yeah. It was more of a JV starting lineup. Yeah. And, and we were okay with that. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes I think you have to do that right. when you're green coffee buying, when you're trying to fill a, part in your menu and i think um i think that's a great actually green coffee buying tactic it's what i read in the dear green coffee buyers that sometimes there are coffees that you should be buying because they fit a specific flavor profile in your menu and if you want to keep your menu kind of in the general direction yep. you need to fill that void yep. so for us it wasn't a bad coffee we actually cupped it it was good yeah and um it wasn't that we just chose a bad coffee we actually rarely ever do that if at all um, it fit the flavor profile of like chocolatey, uh, citrusy, um, and it was it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I don't know now looking back I'm like that's dumb why didn't we why why it chose to neglect it and mm-hmm. not actually release it, but um, but yeah it wasn't a coffee that was something that we were I don't know we just. And you told, you actually tried to push me to actually release it. And so the difficulty here is that I've realized like, man, just because of somebody's opinion that they shared that, you know, I kind of respect, I guess, or, or want to listen to, um, that swayed my perception of this coffee so much. And I think that's so important to have Mm -hmm. as a roaster, uh, one of the best ways to grow is to have a community of people that mm-hmm. you trust yep. that can actually add input into uh, into what you're doing from an honest and genuine place. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a lot. I think, yeah, we'll take some time to unpack yeah. that because I'm like, okay, where do we start with that? Um, one of the things is I think from the beginning, we were very open with our coffees yeah. from, from day one. Yeah. Like... One, we were open to share coffees with people that we know. Yeah. But two, we were very open about drinking other folks' coffees and getting like, not comparing our coffees to other people, but getting a broader perspective on mm-hmm. what good roasted coffee tastes yeah. like. And then again, like we've talked about that word, word good, like it does have a lot of preference, but it mm-hmm. does have a degree of objectivity. So we have to find a group of people that kind of align with our vision Mm -hmm. just for flavor, but also that align with the objective view of like, what does a good roast taste like? Yes. Um, Because our approach to roasting was, you know, everyone, there's different approaches and not everyone agrees on the same page. What does a baked coffee taste like? What does a uh, coffee that's... um, uh, underdeveloped taste like so mm-hmm. we have to find those group of people that we could trust because not only do they um, agree with our perspective but they understand what we're talking about and we understand what they're talking about for sure i think the most dangerous thing that you can get into as a roaster is just having a lack of humility and to just simply just think that your coffees are always the best yeah and that your roasting better than everybody else and your coffees are spectacular and Mm -hmm. can rival anybody else's and think that you've made it or you've 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 um 
you've what am i looking for you've arrived yeah having that notion that you've arrived there's nothing better that you could do like and that nobody can teach you a thing or can share your their perspective is like is so dangerous because mm-hmm. when you're there actually the the ironic thing is when you're in that position you actually can't get better yeah like you show up you think like man my coffees are the best and there's no way i can get better yeah you can't get better because you don't have the humility to be able to seek advice or seek to be challenged in your approach or seek Mm -hmm. to push the boundaries even if you're at the top how do you push that even further Yep. And if you just don't have humility or even, you know, or that community that you want to listen to and ask for feedback, it's going to be hard to grow. Yeah, uh, because with that humility comes a realization that we all have blind spots. Mm-hmm. That's that's the reality. If you believe that you don't have any blind spots, then you're you need a little more self-awareness. Yeah just yeah. to be direct. So we all have blind spots and we need to like ask people to be our mirrors basically. And mm, we have to create a network. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mirrors. Oh, okay, gosh. oops, didn't mean that. Um, we You have to create a network of those trusted folks that they really have your back. Yeah. Uh, like mirrors do, right? They really, really do have your back. There's trust there, but they also won't call something bad good. Yeah. So there's trust there. You know, a lot in the beginning, at least for us, I remember um, our friends trying our coffees and everyone was raving about them and we were confused. Yeah, it was like it was super hard because we were like, ah, like, thank you. Thank you so much. Like, I wish um, we had someone that would kind of give us some direction Yeah. because when everyone says the same (laughs) thing and it's just good, 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 there's like not much direction because we... We knew that we haven't accomplished roasting. Yes. Like we haven't like learned everything about roasting. Yeah, so we sure. were trying to find direction and we couldn't find it. And it was hard. And the 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 thing is like this could be just like maybe an Enneagram one thing that we just like mm-hmm. we're like, we're not gonna settle. We we wanna be the best and we wanna be perfect and we wanna do things the best way possible and the right way. But um yeah, I think not having like really constructive feedback was very difficult when everything was positive. And we're like, I know this can't be that easy, you Mm -hmm. know? And you're right. No, it it wasn't. And I probably go back and I can, I mean, I want to go back in the curves Mm -hmm. and see what I could do different now with what I, with what I know. But um, that's difficult when you don't have proper uh, feedback because it, it doesn't give you like, very much direction um on the flip side uh i actually also think that our friends weren't saying anything bad actually no and and it's simply because they might have actually enjoyed it yeah and that's actually not a bad thing so this is where things get a little a little confusing and maybe a little more deep or complex um is that you need to be able to find people who you trust and who can give you constructive Mm -hmm. feedback um but on the other hand, um, that there's a sense of subjectivity to flavor profile. And uh, for a lot of people, they might actually just simply enjoy yeah. your coffee. And they could also be right. Like yep. somebody can say your coffee is not great. And somebody else can say your coffee is great. I love it. Yep. And they both can be right. And yep. the difficulty there is like you need to find people who are way more skilled, talented, uh, way more advanced ahead of you to be able to speak into you and be honest and genuine yeah but then um it's okay to 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 get feedback from people who might just be casual coffee drinkers who might mm-hmm. not nerd out as much yeah. about the intricacies yeah. and the fineness and take that as well but the way you take both of those pieces of feedback is going to be different yeah and also like talking to folks who are in the same range that you are um, not only like just skill level but also like progress in the coffee industry and life like one of one of the feedbacks that i remember is from grant from bold bean mm-hmm. like grant and i started in coffee about the same time roughly yeah. and grant grew a lot advanced a lot started roasting for bold bean you and i started mm-hmm. uh, roasting for mirror and i remember sending a couple samples and he understood scott's approach yeah and he was super hyped on it 
And he's like, dude, your curve, that looks great. This is awesome. <laughs> but then he would say, man, but when I taste this, I'm like tasting like there's something off about it. Yeah. Like it's good, but it's not like obviously perfect. Yeah. And I think that honesty, especially in a safe context, like I have some trust developed with Graham mm-hmm. because I've worked with him. I know Bold Bean, you know what I mean? So it was like, I want to say it was easy to take that kind of feedback, but I welcomed it, welcomed it. And that came from a perspective of like, this is something or someone that's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not necessarily a peer, but you know what I mean? Like someone mm-hmm. in the same place and time yeah. as you are. So there's that trust. Um, but then, then again, we've also sent coffees to Scott. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. We've I had, didn't even think about that. Yeah, <laughs> We've also had very you know, okay reviews. And we also had some not so great uh, response, uh, just critiques of our coffees. Um but that that came from what you're talking about from the perspective of like someone with like advanced skills, but also someone yes. we trust, um, someone we look up to, mm-hmm. and we're able to take that information, put it into context, um, log it, uh, take like productive criticism from mm-hmm. it, but then also not just settle there, because just because Scott said it, we still have to uh, take it with humility right yeah <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's hard sometimes like man scott said it's probably gospel it's like you're <laughs> it's like you're scratching you're it's too you're, good. you're you know you're yeah you're supporting my ego here yeah, totally. <laughs> by saying something good like yeah. please um be a little more harsh yeah say share only the bad stuff about yeah, <laughs> about totally. the coffee but yeah. i yeah i think um I, I, looking back now and this may not be for everybody, but looking back now, I think one of the biggest times that we've grown as roasters where where things just change for the better a lot, a little and a lot. Um, but the, some of the biggest ways was because of feedback, mm-hmm. because of people speaking into our roasting, um, into our approaches, into our curves, into our flavor profiles, into our green coffee buying. Mm-hmm. Um and this could be anyone from, you know, uh, Tim at Makeworth, right. uh, Shay, the Q grader that works at Woods, was a huge, uh, he had some really great things to say, mind-boggling things, and mm-hmm. some stuff he said was like, oh, okay, we need to reevaluate yeah. here, <laughs> totally. you know? Yeah. And, um, I mean, Max, I mean, there, there, there's just so, so many really awesome people mm-hmm. that, you know, as cliche as this sounds, like, we wouldn't have been here. Yeah. We wouldn't have gotten here without any of them. And that sounds very cliche. I was not expect I did not want this podcast to come here. (laughs) But but that's the reality of it, you know? And not once again, not to say that we've made it by no means. I think I think we've grown. I think I'm 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 to say the least, I'm I'm proud of of where we are right now. But I also I'm like, man, how do we push the boundary more? How do we get better? How do we just one percent better than than we did last month? Let's just go just a little further. Yeah, that's a, that's a very big question. But I think I get these like memories. I don't know. I don't know. This podcast turned into like a reflection <laughs> i know like <laughs> that's like, the thing i'm like like this yeah. must be like in, like encouraging like hey yeah. you all you roasters out there just yeah. and then now i'm like oh, oh. yeah i i get like the, two of these memories and one of them is uh kind of the nerve-wracking time when we went over uh to the camber or in tony's roastery and cupped coffees with kb mm-hmm. uh like we we knew kb but weren't super close at that point yeah. you know what i mean and it was just like going to someone, also someone we looked up to for a long time. Yeah. Like Camber has been like known for just having great coffees for a long time. They've yeah. like kind of established that. And then cupping our coffees on their table is mm-hmm. very intimidating. Yeah. But I remember leaving for that and being like, like not even to say like we got this perfect recipe or yeah. we got this perfect feedback where it changed our company. But leaving that and just feeling proud about the fact that we did it. Like yeah. we cupped coffees at Camber with one of their roasters. Yeah. Like that's already an accomplishment mm-hmm. to talk with uh, someone like KB, to process flavor with someone like her and um, to do that. And then I think another memory is I remember when we were debating on whether we should ever send coffees to narrative. 
Yeah. Like we didn't even know when we were ready to send coffees to narrative. Yeah. Cause yeah. it was like, it was a major feat for us to achieve and it was scary at some point. Just and to then, send them. Just to that, send that, them. That, yeah. Not to get feedback, yeah. just to yeah. send them to narrative. But then also like getting feedback from Max and mm-hmm. the narrative team and realizing like, Oh, like they're doing this out of honesty. Like the, the critique and the evaluation of the coffee isn't to tear us down or tear anyone down. It's yeah. so that we can grow. So like no matter what the feedback, whether we had a good coffee or a bad coffee, it yeah. became exciting. And we're like, Oh, this is how we take coffee yeah. to the next level. And, and it's knowing that we've had both. Oh yeah. Like, it's not just like, this is the, all of it's bad, even though, you know, there, there's been, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some hairy moments there, <laughs> but, Woo. but you know, but yeah. like, uh, you know, seeing what other roasters are submitting on the, um, when you, you know, I've cupped with the narrative team a couple mm-hmm. times when they have like 80 coffees or whatever. And you're like, okay, the, all four of those coffees was not something I would want to drink, yeah, <laughs> you know? Um, but knowing that man there's been times when we've had some really great coffees and then all sometimes when you know the feedback like wasn't so hot um but man that i don't know i i love a challenge i mm-hmm. love the process of of learning of growing of fighting for it and then you realize i mean we have this joke where um the last batch of every coffee is usually the best <laughs> the one, best one. <laughs> yeah it's like after you roast it yeah. through like 500 pounds of it and then you're like on your last batch you're know, like damn this is so good <laughs> <laughs> this is so good oh, uh, but you know um yeah i, I think that example kind of captures everything yeah. it's like you're always always growing and you're always arriving somewhere because you're taking a step forward but you've sure. never arrived. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, man, I, uh, this is going to get really like metaphysical, but, <laughs> uh, but like, I don't ever want to arrive. Yeah. To a certain extent, like, I hope I ri- arrive. Like, if we're talking in the scope of coffee, not just mm-hmm. life, but in the scope of coffee, I want to arrive when I'm like 50. It's <laughs> a, a long way. You're a young buck. I know. I know. <laughs> but, you know, like, having my arrival point be way out there mm-hmm. because if I arrive now at my greatest potential, greatest skill level, that means it's downhill from there. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah, exactly. that's, yep. that's just no fun. And, yep. um, and growth is always both, you know, extremely rewarding, but also very challenging. And mm-hmm. it, it takes, there's so much humility involved yeah. and failure is such a, is such a part of it, mm-hmm. you know, that, um, yeah anyways yeah any final words wow now not many final words just a bunch of thoughts and reflections yes yeah i think this is a good episode not only like to share this with folks but like you and i just chatting about this i think we've had some interesting conversations in the past few days kind of like these transcendent bigger picture conversations Mm -hmm. that not only go beyond coffee but go like kind of deeper into understanding of like, what do we want to accomplish? Like, what are we doing here? Why are we doing these things? Mm -hmm. And talking about the people that influence us kind of lead me in that why question. Yeah. And I, yeah, I just, I just think this conversation needs to happen more. Mm -hmm. And we, we do have this conversation a lot. I feel like there's like, we don't plan these conversations, Yeah. but I think at some point we hit, a time and a place where it just naturally comes out of this like groaning like what are we doing <laughs> like ah let's look back on where oh, we were geez. and yeah. why we were doing things and i think a lot of the times the why question leads to talking about like our group of folks who mm-hmm. influence us and not only is this a good conversation for us to have it's a like i encourage this conversation for everyone to have mm-hmm. especially if you're roasting or you work in coffee uh, i think this is a grounding conversation that could propel you to go even further yeah. than you could have imagined yeah i i agree and i think yeah pour some more batchy <laughs> that, that's the move um yeah. i'm very thankful for this entire journey and just knowing that you know we're coming up on three years of running mirror and knowing that 
in the next couple of weeks, there's a lot of exciting stuff that's hopefully going to drop in the next, you know, in the next month we mm-hmm. need to. Um, and all the exciting coffees that it just feels like, um, yeah, all those, all those difficult experiences and the learning and the humility and the, uh, the bad, the, the, the bad feedback and the good feedback. It mm-hmm. just, um, you know, I don't know. It just leaves me thinking like the, the destination, uh, the journey is so much more enjoyable mm-hmm. than the destination itself. Yeah. So that being said, folks, hopefully this was understandable to some of you. Um, I know, I know this podcast was mo- also kind of mostly directed towards roasters mm-hmm. because I think this is some very good information to have. Um, and I think if you're listening and you don't have a community or a group of people, um, you can reach out to us. We'll always take samples. I'll cup your coffees, yeah. but you know, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, but that being said, if you don't, I guarantee if you want to grow, find a community that you can give samples to, they can learn from, ask for genuine, real feedback, not, not just fake. This is great, mm-hmm. but really something that's going to challenge you. I guarantee you that's going to help you grow. That's it. That's it. All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening to an episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Sessions podcast. And remember, folks, as always, reflect what's good.